Guess who? <laughs> well, you know it's Grandma, and I know it's Henry, and I know it might be Cora, and I know it might be Bonnie. I meant guess who this is? Mr. P -p -p Putter. Mr. Putter and Tabby. Write the book. Apparently, that's what they're going to do. We'll see. By Cynthia Ryland. Chapter One, An Idea. In the winter, a big snow always came to Mr. Putter's house. Mr. Putter and his fine cat, Tabby, liked the big snow. But they couldn't go out in them, in it. <laughs> they were too old. Mr. Putter might slip and break something, and Tabby might catch a bad cold. They didn't mind staying in, though, because Mr. Putter's house was so cozy. It had nice soft chairs, it had velvet pillows, it had a fireplace. Staying in was all right when everything was so soft and velvety and warm. One day, when Mr. Putter and Tabby were inside for a big snow, Mr. Putter got an idea. His idea was to write a book. He had everything a writer needed, a soft chair, a warm fire, and a good cat. And he had a pen and plenty of paper. I've always wanted to write a mystery novel, Mr. Putter said to Tabby. So he brought out lots of paper, lit the fire in the fireplace, plumped his chair, and got ready to begin. First, he had to think of a title. He thought, and he thought, and thought. Finally, he told Tabby, I shall call my book The Mystery of Lighthouse Cove. It was a very good title. It was full of mystery, and as a boy, he had read lots of books with titles like that. Mr. Putter was so pleased, he decided to fix a snack. So, he went into the kitchen and fixed a big apple salad, a pan of corn muffins, some custard pudding, and a cheese ball. <laughs> There's the cheese ball. Have you ever had a cheese ball? I have. It's pretty good. You, you cut into it, put it on crackers. It's cheese shaped into a ball. Uh, back to the story. <laughs> Mr. Potter spent three minutes on his title and four hours making his snack. But first he had to stoke the fire and then he had to clean Tabby's... I think I skipped a page. I did. I skipped a page. Sorry. He did all that stuff at, in four hours making the snack and then he took a nap. Mystery writing was hard work. Chapter two. What? Wait a minute. This says one, an idea, and I thought it meant chapter two. But this says two, chapter one. That's why Grandma was confused, because it says number two, but this says chapter one. The numbers don't match. Anyway, on the second day that he was a mystery writer, Mr. Putter had a nice long breakfast with Tabby of oatmeal and tea. Then he settled down to write again. But first he had to stoke the fire and then he had to clean Tabby's ears and then he had to find a sweater And then he had to move his chair closer to the window. And then he had to move it back. I know someone else who writes like this. I know her very well. <laughs> then he settled down again. He was ready to write. 
Mr. Putter looked at the walls and he thought and he thought and he thought and he thought. And finally he wrote chapter one. He began to think some more and he was thinking, as he was thinking, he looked out the window. A rabbit was in the yard. Such a nice rabbit, Mr. Putter said to Tabby. The rabbit made him think of Easter and Easter made him think of boiled eggs. He decided to fix a snack, so he went into the kitchen and he fixed 20 boiled eggs and a vegetable stew. And then Mr. Putter spent one minute on chapter one and three hours on the eggs and the stew. And then he took a bath. And then he took a nap. Mystery writing wore him out. Chapter three, good things. Hmm. The third day that he was a mystery writer, Mr. Putter woke up ready to write again. He liked being a writer ready to write. First, he and Tabby had cinnamon toast and tea. And then Mr. Putter petted Tabby and began to think. He looked out his window thinking. He looked at his fire thinking. He looked at Tabby thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Mr. Putter thought how blue the sky was. He thought how warm the fire felt. He thought how nice it was to be with Tabby. He thought about so many good things he began to write them down. He wrote and wrote and wrote. Mr. Putter wrote all day long. And on his list of good things is yellow cats, old sweaters, cinnamon toast, long baths, good dogs, rain. What would you put on your list of good things? Hmm. It's always fun to make a list of good things. When he finally stopped writing, the big snow had melted. Mr. Putter went next door with Tabby to visit Mrs. Teaberry and her good dog, Zeke. They, shh, oops. They had some French fried butternut squash for supper. Yum. That sounds good. Then Mr. Putter read good things. When he finished, Mrs. Teaberry said it was enchanting. She said Mr. Putter was a wonderful writer. She said she could listen forever. I wanted to write The Mystery of Lighthouse Cove, Mr. Putter said sadly, but I wrote good things instead. I ate too much and took too many naps. Mrs. Teaberry told him not to worry. She said, the world is full of mystery writers, but writers of good things are few and far between. Mr. Putter did not feel so sad then. He did not feel sad at all. In fact, he was thrilled. Every writer loves a good review. To celebrate good reviews and good neighbors, Mr. Putter took Mrs. Teaberry and Tabby and Zeke out for vanilla malts. That's like a vanilla milkshake. Mm -mm, very good. And Mr. Putter had so much fun and thought of so many good things that he could not wait for the next big snow. So, he could be a writer again. Mr. Putter and Tabby, I think I'd like to live next door to them on the other side, would you? Might be fun. Love you.